What you're looking at now is roughly over $10,000 in computer hardware. And what you're looking at now is the person who has no idea how to use any of it. Hey guys, what's up? In today's video, we're gonna have a little bit of a talk. I know that's how all of my videos have been recently, but I have no idea what I'm doing and have very little time to figure out how to do it. So I'm gonna give you a quick rundown. On this table right here is some, keyword, some of the hardware that was going to be involved in a humongous project I was working on my channel. And now you may know I'm always working on a humongous project and that's because I think I can do a lot more than I actually feasibly can. As you can see in this huge establishing shot right now, right? You see all these computer parts. Can you shut the fuck up? You see a ton of computer parts. And to break it down a little bit, we've got fiber optics. Yeah, we've got fiber optic cabling. We've got storage, storage, and well, a hell of a lot more storage. We've got graphics card, graphics card, more graphics card, and somehow even more graphics card. We've got a ton, and I do mean a ton, of small computers, yes, 192 gigabytes of RAM, we've got CPU, we've got an insane enterprise motherboard and a bunch of random other garbage, yada yada, speed through it, we're done. So, what is all this stuff and why do I of all people have it? Well, the truth is, I'm really okay at sending emails to companies. Why do I have all of these things? These are some pretty cool things. I'm going to go over each thing in case you thought something was cool. We'll talk about it later, though. I'm going to try to get all the big stuff out of the way first, and then we'll get into the little things after everyone who doesn't care has left. And then there's like two people are like, oh, yeah, I like computer hardware. Basically, if you don't know, I was working on a huge project, a NAS. Now, for most people, that's a very easy project. Go on Amazon, you click Synology, and you buy the first thing you see, and you put a bunch of hard drives in it. Done. Except the way I wanted to do it was I wanted to build my NAS because I don't have this amount of money in my bank account. No, that's preposterous. Why would I spend this amount of money when I could waste this amount of money? So I proceeded to send actually over a hundred emails and do all of five minutes of research to see if it was possible for me to build my own NAS with the hardware I have and the hardware I could get for free. Keyword, hardware I could get for free. If you didn't hear that whole part, that's very important because my channel has not many subscribers. I'm going to be honest, it's a lot compared to zero, but it's not a lot compared to the kind of people that normally get free stuff. So when I reach out to companies and say, can I please has free stuff? And they say yes. Well, I'm very confused and extremely aroused, but that's besides the point. So. I'm going in circles with my, and, and I cannot, I can't come up with a way to do this video. I just stacked all this random hardware. So back to the point, I was trying to build a NAS and I don't know how to do that. Speaking of sounding dumb, so I wanted to build a NAS that was not only just a network attached storage device, but was also super fast, had 10 gigabit connection to my editing and ingest computers, and was also a fully fledged multi computer render server. So not only did I want to fill a computer with a ton of hard drives and a ton of SSD, realistically speaking, it was almost all going to be SSD with hard drives as backup bulk storage that is on a continuous backup because the NAS would be for editing. It would almost act like an internal SSD, except it would be much easier because it could be somewhere else in the building and by building I mean room because I have a room but it could be across the office connected over our first product fiber now not this fiber this you want to talk about how expensive this gets you guys are questioning the price and all this this is fiber optic cable this is om5 fiber optic cable this would be for a short connection and this and this is 30 meters of om4 fiber optic cable along with two 10 meter runs 
So for this much, all from FS.com, along with the SFP Plus fiber optic transceivers to go with them. So we've got the highest end multi-mode fiber that I could find and the transceivers to go with them. We've got SFP Plus cards in all of the machines. We've got, oh my God, I completely forgot, like this, this huge product, where did it go? And to go with all of that, we have a 10 gigabit per second fiber optic network switch from Microtik, who again, like FS.com, sent this over when they heard that this was such a cool project that I made sound really cool. But what they didn't know is that I'm stupid. It's okay though, I'm gonna pull this off and they're gonna love me, it's okay. You guys gotta help me though, tell people about it, post on a Reddit. So, the goal is to have a NAS, and I'm still doing this, so I keep saying goal was, but it still is, to have a NAS that is connected over fiber at 10 gigabits per second, has a ton of SSD space, and could also be virtualized into multiple machines, each capable of both editing and rendering. Now, I don't have employees, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know how virtualization works, but that's never stopped me before because I still want to have a couple of distinct VMs on this server. It's just going to be a tower PC. It wasn't going to be like a whole server, but you understand the point. Some of those VMs would use VMware Horizon to stream to these mini PCs or, or thin clients, as you'd say. But these were also for a separate project we can't talk about yet because I haven't figured it out and I, I don't actually know what it is yet. But when I do, I'll tell you. That's still the goal. Now, this thing is gonna be insane. And each one of those VMs would have a separate graphics card. Yes, which is why we have four graphics cards here. And these are not just ordinary graphics cards. These are very specifically picked graphics cards. We've got a Quadro P4000, a Pascal-based eight gigabyte single slot graphics card. We've got a Quadro GP a Quadro GP100, a 16 gigabyte HBM2 equipped Pascal based graphics card as well. It's basically a 1080 Ti with HBM2. RTX A4000, single slot 16 gigabytes of ECC GDDR6 memory on board. Basically it's a 3070 Ti cut down a little bit in terms of speed and power. It's got a six pin connection on the back. Amazing graphics card. And finally, the best thing, an NVIDIA Titan V currently on loan from Silverstone. Check them out. Uh, although I have just submitted an offer to purchase it from them, which I'm really hoping they accept. I haven't, have, haven't submitted a price, but I've submitted an offer to an intent to purchase if they will let me. So I really hope either A, I can get this video up before that, or B, I can actually purchase that from them. So thank you, Silverstone, for sending that over, at least on loan. All of those cards were gonna go in the rig. All of those graphics cards were gonna go in to this NAS. Not only that, all of this storage. Well, I don't have any of it in my hand. Hold on, let's go through it really quick. All of these NVMe SSDs for bulk storage. This U.2, you can see it in there, and you can see it right here. U.2 DC1500M from Kingston. The fact that Kingston was willing to send this over is insane because I said, hey Kingston, you guys have sent me like hundreds of gigs of RAM. You've sent me a bunch of cool shirts and swag and stuff sent me a bunch of SSDs, including the one I'm recording on right now. Could you also send me this super expensive, super high performance data center SSD that I should never have? They were like, yeah, sure, here you go. What? So yeah, I've got a one terabyte U.2 drive for the main storage of the system. The main high speed storage as U.2. It's basically NVMe, but with a fancy connector. We've also got sent over by Bywin, B-I-W-I-N on the screen now, Bywin sent over two one terabyte drives because they are an OEM of these drives or they manufacture these drives. I don't really know how to explain it. This is the Predator GM3500 and HP SSD FX900. I don't know. They just sent these over and they reached out to me. That never happens. Both Kingston and Bywin originally reached out to me 
Bywin reached out recently. Kingston reached out like a year ago, and we've been best friends ever since. But Bywin, these are like high-class drives, and I can't wait to do a review on them and also put them in my NAS. So yeah, Bywin, that came out of nowhere. Then we've got the power supply. I'm not going to lift it up because he didn't the shot here. The Twins Pro 500 watt. It's a, tw it's a dual module power supply. ATX standard. ATX standard. Redundant. Redundant for my NAS, of course, and its VMs and everything. So it's important to have a redundant power supply. And I know there's a lot of power in this, but 500 watts redundantly should be honestly plenty. It can do actually over 500 watts completely safely, considering the fact it does have two modules inside. It's pretty great. We've also got Fire Cuda 510, uh, a KC600, two terabytes sent over by Kingston. Now this is the one terabyte one, but it's because the two terabytes is what's recording this video. Uh, WD Blue, two terabyte, I randomly got in a random build. Crucial drives, bunch of random SSDs just all over the place. 192 gigabytes of Trident Z Royal that I've just collected over a couple years now just to go into this insane motherboard. And now we get to the centerpiece of this whole build. The motherboard. I bought this a little over a year ago. I bought this almost two years ago now. Uh, and it's been a great board. Now, I had some big plans, which were unfortunately crushed like my dreams by the fact that I can't afford it and no one will give me one, although I'm still, I got emails out there, Intel, respond to my email. This is the Azeroc Rack EPC621D8A. It is an LGA3647 motherboard with support for six channel memory and, as you can see, these weird offset white dim slots, support for Intel persistent dims obtain persistent dims i don't remember the acronym for them but they're basically 512 gigabytes of ram in a single dim they're just super fast obtained storage that can you know be used in these dim slots here and can supplement ram it's insane and i would use those as super ultra high speed editing ram discs man i was so excited for that unfortunately Whilst the board clearly supports them, my CPU, my insane 20 core, 40 thread, engineering sample, Intel Xeon Gold 6138, sadly does not support the Intel Optane persistent memory. I think that's what it's called. You get the point. You can look it up and you'll find it. Unfortunately, this 20 core, 40 thread behemoth is a 6138 and only Intel's 6.2 generation Xeon Golds and Platinums supported this feature on this motherboard. So I tried, but I could not acquire a decently priced, decently performing second gen Xeon scalable CPU with support for those dims, even though they're very inexpensive if you can find them and the dims would be the easy part, surprisingly, very surprisingly, because no one else can use them. So, there is more stuff. I have more stuff on the way. Like even Icy Doc sent over this really cool hot swap uh, SATA, S -dot, uh, SATA Bay thing. It's really cool and I'm going to do a video on it because it's kind of sick and it'll be super useful for my SATA SSD based workflow. And wow, all of this stuff wasted because it was sent to me. Now again, I'm going to do something freaking cool with it. I don't know how many of you are even still watching or are going to watch this thing. But... I just want you to know I got big plans that I have so much work to do for, but I also have to like do like my actual job and stuff, which takes up, I don't know, eight hours a day. So uh, that's, a, that's a lot of job, but you know, I come here at nights and I, I hang out and I play with the computers and you can't play with my computers, they're mine. Sometimes I live stream and sometimes I give them away. It's kind of weird. I don't know what I'm doing, but yes, that's it. I've left links to all of the products that I featured from the sponsors of this project, aka the people who sent me a bunch of free stuff. If you're one of the people who sent me free stuff, well, I don't know why you're watching this video. No, none of them ever watched my video, except for Kingston that one time when they watched my video and I was like, Kingston won't watch it, and then they did. But yeah, that's what's going on. If you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them in the comments section. Uh, it would definitely help to drown out all of the consistent stupidity that happens in my comment section uh so if you have any suggestions i'd like to hear it 
If you have any comments, questions, queries, or concerns, I, again, would like to hear them. And, uh, and that's about it. That's all I've really got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for this insane project. And again, if you have any ideas or suggestions for what you'd like to see with any of these hardware features and something like that, if you want to see a video specifically that no other channel will do, that's where I come in because I'm desperate or because I'm, I'm stupid. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.